Probably the biggest mistake newbie investors make is to invest in stocks, not companies. And today's stock is going absolutely mental, while the company's fundamentals don't match the hype. If you're someone invested in IonQ, you need to proceed with extreme caution right about now. I spent two decades learning how not to invest and a decade on Wall Street learning how to invest. Today, we're going to explain exactly what it would take for us to invest in IonQ stock. So they say quantum computing is like high school sex. Everybody says they're doing it, but nobody actually is. The few who are doing it aren't very good at it, and the only ones who really know what they're doing are the teachers. We've been waiting for quantum computing to arrive for decades, and the bull thesis needs no introduction. Quantum computing promises to change mankind in all sorts of areas where classical computing isn't effective. It could be accelerated with AI or even accelerate AI. Nobody seems to know. When even the experts don't know how quantum computing works, revenue growth is the only ground truth. That's how we know progress is being made. Breakthroughs have been happening for over a decade. Numerous players have reached quantum supremacy. Big climactic events always seem five years away. And in the meantime, software is solving a lot of the problems while we wait for the hardware. Now we've talked before about the bull thesis for IonQ. It's probably the best quantum computing company out there that's publicly traded. Why? Because it actually has revenue growth. The founders are accomplished pioneers and they'll serve to attract talent in the field, and they were supposed to deliver a rack-mounted quantum computer for data centers by 2023. Again, we look to revenue growth for progress of that happening. They were supposed to debut the world's most powerful quantum computer back in 2021 when they had their SPAC debut. But as investors, we don't really care if you're using quantum computing, cloud computing, classical computing. All we want to see is strong revenue growth. That's proof you're disrupting something. And indeed, IonQ has strong revenue growth. You can see that here in 2025. That's this year. They're expecting 98% revenue growth. Now, a big red flag for us is heavy customer concentration risk. And the reason for that is twofold. First of all, when you have such a concentrated customer base, so around 70% of their revenues now come from two customers, and last year was 77%. If one of those customers bails, you're sort of screwed. But that also shows us that other companies aren't coming around to purchase whatever it is they're selling. So they've only managed to attract two firms that are willing to pay them money for whatever it is they're selling. That's not a good sign. You want to see this concentration risk decreasing over time, not increasing. So when we go to value IonQ, as we do any firm that we're looking at, we can look at quarterly revenues here. And we see that last quarter, they had a bit of a dip. Now, most disruptive tech companies don't see revenues drop 42% in a single quarter unless it's cyclical. Now, what's interesting about last quarter is that IonQ said that they recognized revenue above the midpoint of their guided range, and it was 100K above the midpoint. So fair enough. If we're going to use our simple valuation ratio that takes the last quarter and annualizes it. You divide market cap by annualized revenues. That's called our simple valuation ratio. We're not going to use that since there's volatility here, at least in their last quarter. Instead, we're going to use a simple price to sales ratio, which takes the last 12 months of revenues instead of annualizing the last quarter. But when we look at this $11.44 billion company, we can then divide that by the last four quarters of revenue, which are around $43 million. And we get a price to sales ratio of 260 66. So what? What does this tell us? Well, nothing, because we need a benchmark to compare it to. Now, when we start to look at appropriate benchmarks, we see the NASDAQ has an average price to sales of six. Our tech stock catalog, where we calculate this simple valuation ratio for several hundred stocks, that's also around six. And we won't buy any company that's three times our catalog average, so anything above 18. And it's not uncommon for rich companies to trade in the 20s. Now, of course, companies with no revenues will return null when you attempt to calculate this ratio. And that happens to be about how much interest we have in companies that don't have revenues. They haven't proven product market fit. Now, one of the most overvalued stocks, it actually is the most overvalued stock in our catalog of 460 disruptive tech stocks is Palantir. Now, if IonQ traded at the same valuation as Palantir, remember Palantir is at nosebleed valuation. IonQ would be trading at $14 a share. Instead, it's trading at around $45 a share. And this is from our tech stock catalog. You see here, we've taken some other examples of 
stocks that have quite high simple valuation ratios. Again, you can just consider that to be price to sales, more or less it is, but it's more responsive since you're using last quarter and annualizing it. And here you can see this cool feature where we look at the current simple valuation ratio, compare that to the average over the past year, and then there's a premium or a discount. You can see there's 187% premium for Palantir because it's absolutely skyrocketed, thanks in part to all the clout chasing 25-year-old life coaches out there pumping it. You also see Rocket Lab here trading at a premium, and NVIDIA is actually trading right under our threshold of 18. Now, we've been holding NVIDIA for nearly a decade, but recently the CEO of IonQ apparently compared his firm to NVIDIA, saying that IonQ would be the NVIDIA of quantum computing. Well, <laughs> if IonQ traded at the same valuation as NVIDIA, so one of the most disruptive stocks out there, one of the largest companies in the world, it would trade at around $3 a share. And if we do the same comparative valuations here for other interesting, richly valued names out there in the disruptive tech space, you see here that IonQ would be trading well, well below the $45 a share it trades at. So IonQ is extremely overvalued. That's a fact. Why? Well, it's because of sector hype. And you can look at other names in the quantum computing sector to see that. So you have Rigetti with a simple valuation ratio of 679. D-Wave at 91.5. That's because they had a pretty good quarter last quarter, bringing in $15 million in a single quarter. I'm sure that's well below whatever they said they were going to do in the SPAC deck, but at least they're starting to show some progress. Then you have Quantum. This firm might be one of the worst things I've ever seen. So their simple valuation ratio comes in at around 12,000. That's because this $1.87 billion company brought in less revenues than we did last quarter. And when you look at Quantum's revenues over time, you can see that they haven't even been able to clear 400K in a single year. So nothing to see there. Moving on. Now, if we look back to 2022 when we did this similar exercise, you see Rigetti and D-Wave trading at 4 and 12. So they've been hyped to, to no ends. You also see IonQ is trading at around 82 at that time. So roughly Palantir's valuation. We did the numbers to show what the share price should look like when compared to the valuation of other firms. Quite interesting to see NVIDIA valued at a simple valuation ratio of 28 compared to the 17 it is today. So it has traded rather rich in the past, though I don't recall it ever trading towards Palantir type valuations. Now, when we look at, say, Rigetti or D-Wave, where exactly is the revenue growth? Here you can see quarterly revenues over time. And of course, D-Wave selling their first advantage system sale to a major research institution. They were supposed to be doing that a long time ago, according to their SPAC deck. And of course, they also declared quantum supremacy. And when you look at these claims, of course, they're often disputed. Even the experts will have a hard time agreeing on what exactly is taking place when companies declare quantum supremacy. And we looked before at Google back in 2019. The day they declared quantum supremacy, we wrote a piece on that. You should check it out. And of course, a couple other entities have done the same thing. So ask yourself this, why do shares of IonQ deserve such a premium? And if you go to parrot some growth story from management, what makes that credible exactly? Is it less credible if they have a track record of breaking promises? So when we think about straight shooters, when you're working with C-level types, you want them to state emphatically what they think with conviction. You see this from Musk. You want to see transparency as a result. So when people say what they think, they're not hiding things from you. You want people to do what they say they're going to do. So integrity. And you also want them to explain with transparency any time that expectations are missed. So that's accountability. Broken promises make it very difficult to believe whatever hype stories a management team is trying to spin. And when we look back at IonQ's SPAC deck, it's rather miserable. They expected $237 million in revenues this year. Instead, we're supposed to get $85 million at the midpoint. Now, you want to pay close attention to acquisition. So you don't want them to pull a desktop metal. And what I mean by that is sometimes these SPACs, which ended up with a lot of cash, realized they weren't able to hit the lofty revenue growth aspirations they laid out in their deck. So what they do is they take some of that cash and they go start making acquisitions and try to grow by M&A instead of organically. And then what they'll do is sweep under the table whatever they were selling before. That's not good because typically for mergers and acquisitions, you can't just bolt those on and see synergies. Even looking across the broader scope of course, 
corporate acquisitions, they say somewhere around 30% realize the synergies that are expected. So really you're counting on this management team, which is a track record of breaking promises, to go out there and find value in the quantum computing space that's hyped. That means they're going to be paying a premium. And trying to purchase revenue that way is going to be very expensive. Now they have $588 million in cash. We speculated several years ago that they would get involved with M&A because they have quite a long runway. And indeed they are. That's been happening, will continue to happen. And since that SPAC debuted, you can see the return here. Now, so whenever you're looking at returns for a stock, you want to back out market returns. We've done that here, and IonQ has shown a 269% return since their 2021 SPAC. But if you look at this chart, you see the extreme volatility in share price. And what this will do to investors who aren't very experienced is it will whip them all over the place. Here you can see that drawdown. This is the year-to-date return. So it's returned 10% compared to a market return of about flat. That's for the S&P 500. And you can see there that drawdown all the way below 50%. So somebody who purchased shares at the beginning of this year would have, would have been really sweating all those paper losses. Now they're about even. So when would we invest in IonQ? At what point does their valuation fall to a level that's commensurate with their future potential? Now there are lots of growth stocks out there with great potential and there's an opportunity cost for tying up your money with IonQ. The valuation isn't high. It's absolutely ludicrous. And that's across all quantum computing stocks. When you see stocks that are loosely connected, in this case by quantum computing, when you see them moving together and there's no single news event that affects them all, when you see that persist over time, that's always hype. We saw this before in gene editing. We've seen this in nanotechnology, 3D printing. We see this all the time. Like any other exciting tech stock, and we hold 33 of them, we'd invest in IonQ, perhaps at an SVR no higher than 18. And as we showed you, you can do the math and see what that share price looks like. It's a fraction of where it trades today. And as we said several years ago, revenues that clear $50 million for more than just two or three clients would make this company start to appear quite attractive for quantum computing exposure. Now, I noticed that IonQ now has an at-the-market offering, so they're selling even more shares. They're selling shares into that hype, as they should, right? But that that's also diluting existing shareholders. And for whatever reason, I don't know why this is, whenever there's an at-the-market equity offering, a legion of rabid cheerleaders will be out there making sure that people only say positive things. Now, IonQ has an excessive number of these folks for whatever reason, I don't know. And few are actually going to watch the video. They'll just jump right down in the comments section and start commenting. So to those who are going to comment, imagine we're in a class and somebody said the following. Shorty, you don't know IonQ if you should talk about if you don't want to get rich, then shut your mouth, D-Y-O-R noob. It's not very helpful, right? Well, those are the sorts of comments that we often get for companies that are being pumped by cheerleaders. In our comments section, everyone's a teacher. Teach us all something, please. You might even consider the ancient art of punctuation. So to keep things on track, here's a question for you to ponder. Why do you think IonQ deserves such a premium valuation? And don't be afraid to throw up some timelines. Is it five years away, whatever grand thing's going to happen? It's always been five years away. Now, we never short any stock. That's because shorting is a fool's errand. So let's get that out of the way. Again, we would consider investing in IonQ at a price to sales ratio of 18 or below. That means the fundamentals need to catch up in a hurry because as sure as taxes and death, two things are going to happen here. Either those fundamentals are going to catch up to the lofty, ridiculous valuation, or that valuation is gonna to revert to the mean. So a lot of people, I think, attracted to stocks that are running, like IonQ, are probably newbie investors. And for those individuals, there's a lot of mistakes that you can make. I've spelled out some of them here in this video. It's quite good. You ought to watch it if you're a newbie investor, or even if you're a intermediate or advanced investor. There's a lot of mistakes that we've all made. Give this a watch next. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.